Got it. All right. Good, morning. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the detention docket for the 323rd. Um, just take a moment and say that this broad this court hearing is on Zoom and is being broadcast on YouTube to make sure that the people have meaningful access to what occurs inside a public courtroom in compliance with Article 1, Section 13 of the Texas Constitution, also known as the Open Courts Act. And so since the courtroom is, we are conducting these proceedings on Zoom. I'd like to remind everyone that this is still a court proceeding and people are expected to behave appropriately for court. So please uh, have your cameras on, make sure that there are no domesticated animals uh, crossing the screen or in the background. Please have the children behave if there are there with you. Also, I'm gonna say, please do not have any moving backgrounds like being in a vehicle or have a ceiling fan. Don't have bright lights behind your head like a window um, as that tends to shadow out your face. No portion of this court pro proceeding may be recorded, published, or broadcast. Violations of this order are punishable by contempt of court of up to six months in the county jail and a $500 fine. I think. And that's it. All right. So let's just check, make sure. So, Taylor Glover, your camera does need to be on. The officers of the court are excused from having cameras on, but Tayland, your camp, oh, that's OCOK. Okay. All right, I'm sorry, Tayland, the OCOK was cut off. If you have other business, you can go ahead and turn your camera off for now if you'd like. Um, in the future, if you put OCOK up front, then I won't be embarrassed. <laughs> so, okay, all right, let's start with Casey. Yes, sir, how are you doing, Mr. Kim? Hello, Casey. All right, so I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10-day hearing. You've been here for 10 days, so I'm deciding whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Your attorney, Mr. Willett. Brian, I think I said, there we go. Good afternoon, Brian. Good afternoon. All right, so Casey, you're 16 years old. You're on determinate sentence probation for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and deadly conduct. No, I'm sorry, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And Mr. Jennings, what was the sentence or the commitment on this determinate sentence case? Five years, Your Honor. Five years. Uh, yes, sir. And he is on probation until 2026. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so Casey, police received, a, we got an out of custody report from Arlington saying June 6th, the 12 year old was referred for evading arrest by see around one o'clock in the morning, they were dispatched to domestic. Complainant reported 12 year old sister was fighting with the family refusing to come inside. Youth was hanging out around with older boys, ran away from the officers when they told her to stop. Police started pursuing her foot through the complex. She was detained. And the 12 year old female was hanging around with a known gang member, identifies you, Casey, who is on probation with us, and a 19 year old male. A couple of days later, it was reported the 12 year old took the keys to her mother's truck without permission, and the three left in the vehicle did not return until one in the morning. You were driving the vehicle, according to eyewitness reports. Mom did not give permission to anyone to use the truck and wishes to prosecute you for an author's use of, motor, of the motor vehicle. So you had a 12-year-old causing problems with a 16-year-old boy and a 19-year-old boy. And I ordered you detained at a detention hearing. And you were positive for marijuana while you're on probation. So, and we requested Dallas to supervise you. So you are level one outstanding, have been for about 10 days now. All right, so Mr. Jennings, tell me about his, his supervision. I mean, he's on probation for aggravated assault. And how, how the wife, how was he doing on probation? He was meeting with me. The father was meeting with me uh, shortly after I got him. Actually, the initial visit I had with them, he was living with the mother. 
they advised me that the intention was for him to go to Dallas County to live with his father. We submitted a request to Dallas County. He was meeting with me. He was meeting with the um, meeting with me by phone and um, meeting with his Dallas County probation officer. So during this time, he was doing uh, well. There's no real issues other than initially when Dallas tried to reach him. It was reported he was in Tarrant County, so we did an administrative hearing with him and his father to make sure that um, he was in Dallas County and that he would remain in Dallas County to, uh, at least, at the very least, during the um, business week so Dallas County would be able to make contact with him. So where does he actually live then? Where is he supposed to live? He, he's living with his father in, in Dallas County in Irving, Texas. Okay. And was Dallas, did they actually start supervising him? They did initially start supervising him. Uh, when this offense came in, they returned him back to us. So he's still with us while he's in the detention center and pending this new offense. And if he's allowed to return to the community, I believe the father um, want, would like for him to return back to Dallas County with him. Is Dallas going to supervise him then? They will supervise him uh, if he is returned back to the community and living in Dallas County, yes, sir. Okay, so during COVID when he was on probation, when, how many drug tests did we give him? We gave him one, Your Honor. And was he clean or dirty for that one? He was, he was positive for THC. And when was that? That was on July 27th. Now, that was after he was brought in. Like, while he was being supervised, did we give him any drug? When he was in the community, did we give him any drug that tests? Was, we did that one, actually, right before the out-of-custody detention hearing. During um, June, we did not because he, uh, we weren't doing face-to-face -face visits at that time. And then once we started, he was in Dallas County, and we did not have the family come in to do it in uh, UA. You Dallas, just about that last. Um, Dallas that last give him any? Did Dallas give him any UAs? I don't have any record of Dallas giving him any UAs, Your Honor. Okay. Did he have any community service hours? He, I believe, he does have community service hours. Did he do any of those hours? Not at this time, Your Honor, because of the moving back and forth between Dallas County and Tarrant County. So what what did he actually do properly while on probation? He wasn't living where he's supposed to live. He wasn't staying clean. He wasn't doing community service. Did he have restitution? I believe so. I'm using a different computer. My, I was having computer issues. I don't have JCMS pulled up at this time. But if you, give me you know what? I'm looking at Kelly Willis's report, so there's no restitution requested. So... All right, so I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what he actually did right on probation. Like if he did anything right. Reports the, his father was giving me was that he was staying at home. He was following the um, parents' rules in the home. He was able for me to reach him by, um, by phone. All right, so Mr. Jennings, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out on this. Dad is telling you that he was staying at home when he was supposed to, but on June 6th, he was out at 1 o'clock in the morning with a 12-year-old girl and a 19-year-old man. I'm assuming dad, did he have permission to be out at one o'clock in the morning in a stolen car? I believe uh, at that time he must have been in Tarrant County staying with his mother. So um, the father is here. I, yeah, so I dad, here. dad, please, please tell me how, how he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. Actually, he's doing okay staying with me. But my problem was him going back to Tarrant County because that's only where he would get in trouble. And that's my purpose of moving to that, I mean, to Evan, so that I would take him out from Arlington. Now, I'm just gonna beg for second chance for him to stay in Dallas County, where I work with the probation officer to supervise him there with him to be on monitor. That way I will be, he will not be able to get in trouble as from now on. That's all what I can I plead for, please, Your Honor. Mr. Jennings, in this, in the aggravated assault that he's on probation for, was anybody injured? No, Your Honor. Now, Casey, I have a big problem with you being out one o'clock in the morning with a twelve-year-old girl. I understand. Your really honor. big problem. And I think every father of a twelve-year-old girl has a really big problem with a kid on probation. A shooting 
being out with their 12 year old daughter at one o'clock in the morning? Actually, uh, if I may speak on it. Yes. I was actually at the swimming pool on my way home. At one o'clock in the morning? It was actually 10, but as you said, I was out uh, later. Right. Yeah, and I, I stand by that. I think every father of a 12-year-old girl would have a problem with a 16-year-old boy and a 90-year-old man swimming with their 12-year-old daughter at 10 o'clock at night. Give him a second chance, Your Honor. Give me a second chance, Your Honor. Well, Dad, what you don't understand, and I don't think what Casey understands, is when he gets probation, that is the second chance. Like, his first chance was to go through life without shooting a gun at people. So he got the second chance of probation. Now he's you're, what you're asking for is a third chance. Actually, my purpose of asking for this is if I can eliminate him from going back to uh, or get, getting out of Dallas County, he will do as much as he can to stay on the probation's rules. I've worked with him on that and I've talked to him a lot on that. I even let him know that as soon as you take walk into this house and test you positive, Casey, you're going to be gone. And when I brought him here, that thing happened. I tell him, look what I told you. If you are staying with me in heaven, all this will not be happening. This is my reason for asking for a second chance because I think I kind of feel I will pressurize him more to stay out of trouble than him going back to Tarrant County. That's where he get bad friends, uh, bad friends from that influence him from doing what he's doing. When he stay with me in Nevin, he has no friends there, and I'll make sure that he stays within the line of his probation. Please, you yeah, know. Dad, he's 16 and a half. I don't think you can make sure anything when they're that age. So, well. If I fail this time, well, I will now say where well, I fail, but I promise you, I will do what I can to keep him out of trouble. Especially being outside by 10 o'clock in the night, that I did not support. And if he has gone, not gone back to Tarrant County, like I said, all this will not be happening. I try to keep him as much as I can in heaven. I would now, from now, if released, Restrict him from going back to Arlington. If they want to, mother want to see him, he has to come to heaven and see him. All right, Mr. Jennings, this is what I want to do. Is uh, let's give him another UA today. He's back there. Yes, sir. If he's dirty, I'm going to continue to detain him because that means he was smoking pot daily. And he actually gave zero concern about probation. If he's clean, indicates to me that he wasn't smoking as much as some of our other kids are. And I'm okay releasing him on electronic monitor. Okay. With a yes. sweat patch as well. Casey, I'm going to let you know, part of why I'm doing this, you're 16 and a half, and kind of expect you to mess up again, small, not big, but if you do, it's really easy to send you to TJJD, all right? So basically, I'm kind of telling you I'm betting against you, but I'm inviting you to prove me wrong. You prove me wrong, do right, and finish your probation and be done, but if you don't, then I can send you off to TJJD. And then you'll have to deal with those consequences. So it's either at this point, you understand this is your third chance. There's really no reason why I'm going to give you a fourth one. Okay. Thank you, Ron. All right. Thank you. All right, Angel. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Dad. Hopefully he makes it. All right. I'm just praying. <laughs> Your shopping at Salvation Army after court.
All right, we have a parent here now. <clears throat> Ma'am, this is court. Could you please take off your hat? Okay, sorry. That's all right, thank you. Okay. All right, Angel, this is a detention hearing. You've been here for 10 days, so I'm deciding whether to keep you here to release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. All right, so you turned 17 this month. You, you clearly got a probation for assault. And then okay, so February 26th, <clears throat> Arlington PD gave us a report that in January at about 11 o'clock at night, they were dispatched for a shooting. They said two males had just shot at a person's vehicle when he was inside with his two daughters. You know, one of the suspect less seen on foot. And when they got there, they saw both windows on the passenger side had been shattered. Contacted the victim, said he was taking the stock to the store. They saw Angel standing near the car, pointed a rifle to main their property. They basically said they don't have anything. And the victim's daughter asked you why you were doing this and you took off running. And said she was friends with you and you were from school. Described with clothing, gang unit, identified you, and you see, told the police that you were under the influence of Xanax for the first time, not in your right mind. You had a BB gun rifle, pointed the gun to dad, but did not demand the property. Fired it out the window, broke the windows of the vehicle, and... This is all you had a pending case for burglary of a vehicle. Yeah, so before this all happened, Arm CBD referred a case saying on February 5th. So this was the alleged robbery happened in January. Then you got a report for burglary of a vehicle, and then the shooting the car windows comes in. The robbery comes in after that. So here, female sus uh, call said a female suspect was breaking into their car. When they got there, male and female were detained. Officers interviewed you. And you admitted to breaking the cars. So, okay. So, all right. I ended up releasing you on electronic monitor. And then in April, then in May, there's an alert. According to the map, you left home, went to an apartment complex when you did not have an approved timeout. We called mom. She said you left the home and she didn't know where you were, so we issued a warrant for you. So we brought you in and you were negative on your drug test. So I guess my question then, Ms. Rojas, are you here? Judge, I'm coming for her. Okay, so here's, I want to track this electronic monitor thing. So he violated his EM, so we called mom, correct? That's correct. And how long was he out when we contacted mom? Did we contact her right away? As far as I remember, yes, she was contacted right away, and I believe Angel was gone for about two hours. Okay, so mom didn't call us about him leaving the house. We had to call her. That's correct. All right, so mom, if you're not going to do your part in supervising your child when he leaves the house, then I can't really trust you to supervise him when he leaves the house, which means at this point, there's no real adequate supervision in the community for it to release you to. This is a two-part deal, mom. One, we expect these kids to behave when I let them out, when they have a case, but I can't do this alone just like you can't do this alone. I expect the parents to also work with the courts and Ms. Rojas to make sure that Angel gets adequate supervision. If you're just going to try and help them get away with breaking my rules, then Judge, I just can't trust you. Anymore. Judge, I'm yeah. sorry. I think she's a Spanish speaker, so I think Jorge might need to translate okay. what you're saying for her. Please. All right. So, Jorge, if you want to translate that later. Meanwhile, okay. I'm going to go and detain him. He's been approved for placement. And so I just I don't want to restart the quarantine anyways. But I think this is a good teaching moment for mom. So, Jorge, if you can explain to her that part of my decision is also based on the idea that she's not keeping her son accountable. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. But Mr. Adler, he has been approved for placement. 
He has, Judge. Thank you. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no. I'm glad you did. I was wasting my breath to a non-English speaker. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Although, Mr. Adler. Yes, sir. Don't you wish yesterday your client's family could speak <laughs> English? Uh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. Jordan. Yes, sir. All right, Jordan. I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10 day hearing deciding whether to keep you or release you. I keep you'll see a judge every 10 days. Mr. Wilson, your attorney, is here. You're almost 17. You had a prior case. April for burglary of a habitation, which the DA non-suited. Now, July 20th. All right. We're talking PD. I'll do you on their dispatch personal weapons call. Victim said the driver of a gold Camry had shot something from his vehicle to hers, maybe a pellet from a gun that hit her in the arm, causing pain. The victim saw two children on the same street. They both reported the same vehicle drove by. The driver shot them, which what they thought was an airsoft gun. Officer spoke to him. As the officer was speaking to him, the vehicle drove by. Two children gave a description. They could only, only identify the car. So the officer did a traffic stop. You were the driver. When questioned, you admitted to shooting a spot ball gun at the victims, gave it to the police. You said that you were only 16 and just effing around. So you matched the description given by the children. Passenger in Jordan's car gave a statement that you shot the victims as he sat in the passenger seat. And the adult victim and one of the kid's parents wants to prosecute. And that you became belligerent when being told you were being detained. And you're positive for weed. And so DA has filed the cases on these. And your behavior level dropped to one acceptable for not wearing your mask properly. Do you have a parent here? Yes, Your Honor, I'm here. All right, so mom, whose Camry is this? Is yours or his? It's the family's, it's his to drive to work and school, yes. Okay. So I'm more concerned right now about his, I guess it seems like his attitude generally. Does he have an attitude problem with you? No, Your Honor. Other than, other than the typical 16-year-old grumpy being told what to do, he does not have an attitude problem. Well, I mean, so th there's a disconnect for me right now that he, you're telling me he would not have an attitude problem with you, but he would with the police. And that he would tell the police he's only 16, so he wouldn't be responsible for this. Like, help me understand this one. Honestly, in my opinion, Your Honor, the last time he was detained back in April by the Watauga police, um, he asked for a phone call. We weren't notified for over three hours that he had been picked up. I was not okay with that, nor was he. He was picked up at Watauga, kept there for at least three hours, and then brought here. So I think that's where the attitude with the police came into play. That's my opinion. And Judge, I've, I've talked with him uh, since he was arrested, and um, he seems to show remorse at this point. I think that he minimize the conduct when it was happening because the officer was kind of laughing at the situation. He kind of thought it was something to laugh at. And I instructed him to know it's absolutely not something to laugh at. And, uh, but I still wanted to provide you with a picture of that, uh, the splatter ball uh, shooter, just so you could see that it wasn't something that appeared to be a firearm and uh, it Somewhere in the report, it mentioned something that was a, a pellet gun and uh, it wasn't hard metal. It was the break apart little water uh, BBs in there. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to bring up that the mom has been on top of uh, getting him back in line with the regular rules of society. He's got a school meeting for enrollment tomorrow at 5 p.m. And he's got a job, his very first job with IHOP. IHOP lined up and ready to go for him and from what i can tell she seems to be on on, on top of supervising him uh or ready to uh, step up to that goal so 
to mom. Where's he getting the weed from? That I assume his friends. We will discuss that next time he's in my care. I, I do not agree with him smoking weed at all. Let him turn 18 and move to Colorado, right? Yep. When he's an adult, he can do what he wants. But he, when he's under my roof, then, you know, he's going to be getting weekly drug tests when he gets out now. So this is what I'm going to do, Jordan. Is I'm going to go ahead and release you on electronic monitor. I'm also going to make you turn over your driver's license. At this point, if you're behaving this irresponsibly, you are forfeiting your right to drive while this case is going on. So if you want to work, then you need to either get a ride from family members or friends, or you need to take Uber or the like. And so I'm also going to random your analysis, random urine test you for drugs, in addition to whatever your mom decides to do. I'm also going to let you know that you do have to have an honest conversation with your mom. You are still 16 years old, and until you are an adult, your mom is responsible for you. She has the duty to care for you. She also has the right that comes with being a parent. So if I find out that you're not forthcoming about information to your mom that you're, she's asking, I'll just bring you back here. It's just that simple. So that means when your mom asks how much are you smoking, where are you getting it from, where are you getting the money from, and you can't just say a friend, I don't know. Because, you know, if your mom doesn't believe you, she'll just tell us, and I'll just bring you back here. It's really that simple. Did that sound the wrong one? Agreed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is this is the time for you to have an honest conversation with your mom. If you're holding back on your mom, then I'm just really not going to toler tolerate it. And, Your Honor, I, I would like to say thank you for detaining him for these two weeks. Oh, well, thank you. I, I'm trying to do the least I can, but... Yeah. My job is to make sure that Jordan comes out and is actually just a good kid. Absolutely. That's all I want from you, Justin, Jordan. I just want you to be a good son to your mom. I'm yeah. not asking for that much. And he is. I mean, for the most part, I know he's acted up this summer. And Well, mom, so I'm going to stop you there. So okay. please don't enable your son. He no. was out riding around shooting even a toy gun at people and right. smoking weed and not being forthcoming with you. He's not yeah. a good son. Okay? okay. So the idea at this point is saying... This is where Jordan came from, and let's look where he's going now. And he can be a good son, but I am not going to agree with you that he was a good kid. And good okay. kids don't do what he did. Okay? Okay. Jordan, this is your chance to kind of hit reset, start over. I'm not stressed about this case. Uh, it's, it's still a case, but this is not like a capital murder. But the most important thing is that you just show respect for your family and your family rules, and you and I will be good. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Judge. Honor. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Wilson. All right, so Ashton Moore, your camera is off. Your camera does need to be on. Rome. Let's go, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Oh, Ashton, you're the intern. I'm sorry. Put a, yeah. If, who's here from your office? Oh, Diego, if you can tell them, or you're, you don't even have either. Put like CDA in front of your name on Zoom so I know who y'all are. So you, I'll I don't take care of that, Judge. Thank you. All right. Okay, so Rome, you're 15 years old. Do you have a parent here? Yes, sir. Um, mother has transportation issues, um, but she said she, she is aware of his adjudication hearing on the 25th, and so she's making arrangements to be here for that. Okay. So, Romy, you've never been here before. This is a 10 day hearing. Arlington PD brought you in in December of 2020. In August, there was an armed robbery call in progress. When they got there, the suspects were gone. Talked to the victim, said that she was behind the counter, only employee when two sus suspects walked in together. First came at the register to buy something. Once there was a purchase, walked out of the store, second suspect walked around behind the counter, pulled out a gun, told them to open the register. Suspect never pointed the gun at the victim, did not make threats of harm, but she felt in fear for her safety, his safety. So opened the register, the suspect grabbed the cash, placed on pockets, left the location. It was her lock, called 911. And there was a GPS tracker, so they found the area, 
We searched the area and there was $121 taken from both registers. So on September 12th, police were contacted by gang unit. They thought they knew one of the suspects in the robbery and there was a runaway report on the suspect, he had a brother named Rome. They got the body camera videos and saw you walk out of the bedroom. He had the same features as the suspect in the robbery. Contacted the school. And there's a photo lineup. Okay, so please show mom still photos of the robbery. She recognized her son and he was the one holding what looked like a handgun. All right, so well, I've got to ask Ms. Shelley, why, why did this take so long to, before it got to court? Um, we were unable to locate Rome to serve with him to get him uh, to schedule for court. He was set back in May, and Mom showed up for the hearing, uh, but said Rome wasn't at home. She didn't know where he was, so it was on the special status docket. And then he was brought in uh, in June, uh, yeah, in June for. Uh, a resisting arrest. And then I, I, they referred to more aggravated robberies once he was here in detention. Okay. I'm just thinking the, the offense date for that robbery at the store was December 20. Nothing was done for five months, four months. Okay. So while this case is pending, we couldn't find you, Rome, Arlington PD. Dispatched a Circle K about an aggravated robbery. Victim said three black males confronted him, demanded that the victim give them the money. One was armed with a handgun. So they took $143 from the cash registers and a bunch of cigarettes. So see, they tracked the money to Falcon Lake Apartments. Uh, wearing blue hoodie, face covering, blue black shorts, and blue Crocs, carrying a messenger bag. So Arlington PD was dispatched to Subway for Ag Rob. Black male entered the store, drew a handgun, pointed at the victim, took $100 from the register, he got photos. So officers looking for you at your apartment, saw you crossing the street illegally, jaywalking, and then when they tried to detain you, you pushed away, taking the ground cuffed, continued to resist, and you had THC edibles. You refused to identify yourself. And mom confirmed the identity. All right, well, Rome, at this point, I'm pretty sure if I was to release you, you would just, if this is true, you would rob another store. I'm definitely concerned about the safety of the community. And if you try to rob somebody who had a gun to seek of you, if they were to try and defend themselves. So at this point, I'm going to detain you. What, when is court set again, Ms. Frazzle? Um, I believe it's on the 25th. Okay. Yes, the 25th at 1.30. What is it? What is the setting? Do we know? I believe it's just adjudication disposition, but I, I don't. Ms. Taylor, are you here? Did I see Candace? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Do we have a deal worked out? Is there, you think we'll dispose of this? I, I don't. I, I think uh, on the 25th, I'm going to be at a trial college in Huntsville. So okay. I'm going to call and get that cleared up. Uh, we are still waiting. Uh, as far as I know, the only case, that, there's only one case that's been filed. We've been to court once on this before and um, passed for investigation because we, I don't want to take care of one case and then have two more come in. So I'm not sure what the status is of the new filings. Sorry, I've got another court calling me. No, no I understand. Um, 
Candace, I totally understand where you're coming from on that. Look, the part of this is not Rome's fault. I mean, we're talking offense dates from 2020. In December of 2020, this is starting to drag on. And I'm just not going to let it drag on. Like, I will set this for trial before. Like, I don't want this to be tried more than six months after the offense date or after the file date, which right. is in April. Okay. So, like, let's, if y'all want to make a jury demand, then you make the jury demand, but we're going to set this for a final trial on the merits. I'm assuming it's uncontested. If the state, if the DA can't prove their case, they can't prove their case. So, Rome, I'm, I want to be fair to you. I don't want to hold you here just to hold you here. Uh, I need you to give you a fair trial, but I also have to give the district attorney a fair trial, right? But making you sit in here for too long is just punitive on you, and I don't want to do that. Even though if what they're telling me is true, you'd be, I feel like you'd be a danger to our community, uh, but it's entirely possible it's not true, and that's why you deserve a trial, okay? So I, want to, I would like, Stephanie, let's go ahead and set this for now. Candice, do you think you'll want a trial by jury? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so we'll set this for a trial by jury um, on the next day, so it'll probably be early October. Okay. And that way, and if you have any vacation letters, please get them in. Um, Rome, I want to make sure that you get a trial as quick as possible, okay? And it's filling in. Unless you're willing to waive the 45 days, Ms. Taylor, if you are, then we can do it faster than that. Uh, no, not at this okay. point, Your no, I understand. You're entitled to that. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll set this on the trial docket because it looks like if the DA is threatening to bring in more cases... I can assure you they have no desire. Well, you remember, you didn't want to try the same defendant four times on four trials. Right. So it may light the fire under the DA's office to file cases. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Rome, for now, I'm going to go and detain you, but I hope you understand I am trying to get your case resolved as soon as possible. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Judge. May I be Thank excused? You. Yes. Have a good day, Ms. Taylor. Thanks. You too. Amber. Are they lit again? Why are you rolling your eyes? She's all talking about like all right. So Amber. All right, Amber. Okay, so this is a five-day hearing. What that tells me is I'm really concerned about you because you're 15. I would normally do 10 days. So Amber, Arlington PD brought you in saying that suspicious person called Exxon. Female said that two juveniles try to get in the vehicle as she pumped gas. And there was an argument and two juveniles, police came up with the two juveniles as they're running away from the police. And then eventually they caught up. So when you're in the car, you became aggressive, try to kick out the divider and the window of the cruiser. They found out you're a runaway. And, oh, that's right. There's the foster mom because Emily, you threatened foster mom with a knife. Um, she did not want to file charges, but the police went ahead and filed it on behalf of the state of Texas, since there's a knife involved. You're currently in CPS care and the prosecutor has decided to accept the case. So we have somebody from OCO, Ms. Glover, is that why you're here, for Amber? Yes. Okay, are. so what, what is the plan for Amber? I know you were having difficulty finding a place because of the charge. Have y'all found anything? We actually, I just got a message at 147 while I was waiting on this court hearing that uh, Kinsley Care in Houston, this RTC, has accepted Amber's application, but she will not be able to be placed until Tuesday. Okay, so they're willing to accept her. They would take, they're accepting her as a placement. Yes. They just don't have a bed for her until next Tuesday. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right, so Amber, this is the conversation that we're having right now is that you are looking at an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon case. If the DA decides to file this under what's called a determinate sentence case, that means go to the grand jury for approval, you could be looking at 20 years in prison. 
So that's not just in TJJD, but when you turn 19, I could decide to transfer you to the adult prison system to finish out the remainder of your sentence. You could get probation on this case. You could, the case may be dismissed, right? I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can just tell you the worst case scenario, what could happen, which is 20 years, okay? So this is a very serious case. I need you to understand that even if the grand jury does not approve this, you're still looking at going to TJJD up until your 19th birthday, okay? Now, that being said, there's not really a place to release you to, or there hasn't been. We have found a place now. Now, I am telling you, I cannot imagine what you're going through by going to foster homes and being in CPS care. What I can tell you is you can make things worse by not just trying to get along, okay? Just put up with the system, deal with the system. I am sure that whatever reason that puts you in CPS care is not your fault, and it's not fair to you because you don't have the normal teenager life. But I am also here telling you that this is what you got, okay? and that all you can do is make the best of it. This actually could turn out really good for you, or it could turn out really bad for you. And I'm saying this very sincerely, trying to talk to you like a young adult. I am going to hold you until CPS OCOK can transport you to this placement. But you understand, it took several weeks to find a placement for you. I can only tell you that if you're trying, if you cause problems there in Houston, that it's only going to cause you, it's only going to be more difficult next time to find another placement for you. Okay, does that make sense, Amber? Okay, so you understand, I don't want you to burn this chance. Okay? This could, this may be your last good chance, okay? Or it may be your last best chance, or it may be your last good enough chance. Okay, after that, you have to understand, as a juvenile judge, if you push things and things go bad, you may put me in a situation where the only place I can send you is TJJD, because no other place will take you. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I'm just saying, depending on what you do at this placement, you could make it so bad that I can't do anything but send you to TJJD because there's no foster place for you, okay? So I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to threaten you. I'm actually trying to talk to you like an adult. You've shown signs of maturity to me. And I just wanna be respectful to you and just kind of lay this all out so you understand what's going on, okay? So please, please, please go to Houston and do well there. And then hopefully you can transition out and go back to like a foster placement instead of a secure placement. Okay. So meanwhile, I'm detaining you for five for until next Tuesday. They'll pick you up, transport you, and and hopefully I don't see you again. You know, if everything goes right, the DA may not even want to prosecute this. Okay. All right. Thank you, Amber. Judge, can I be excused? Yes, Ms. Glover, good to see you again. Thank you, nice seeing you too, Judge. And thank Have you for day. all the, I, this was not easy, I know for you guys, so I appreciate y'all humoring me uh, uh, on this, uh, on finding a place for her. Yes, sir, Th thank, thank you for being patient with us, I appreciate it. All right, so you're Jordan? Yeah, sure. All right, Jordan, 10 day hearing, deciding to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days. Brian Willett's your attorney. All right, so level on standing, 14 years old. We are never here before. You've been here for two weeks. Fourth PD brought you in, saying yeah. on June 20th, about five o'clock, there's shots fired call on Chapman. Officer approached the victim, and on the request, she got out to talk to him. 19-year-old woman said she was messaging a male on Instagram who indicated a wish to buy some weed from her, and she agreed. At about five o'clock, two men in a gold Kia arrived to purchase the weed. The victim went to her house to get it, and when she came out, allegedly you moved out from behind some parked cars, <clears throat> appearing from behind a blue truck where you had been hiding, produced, pointed a handgun, demand that, you, that she give you the weed. The victim said that two days prior, you have been trying to sell her some synthetic, some K2, trying to pass it off as marijuana. She refused because she could tell it was fake and dumped it on the ground. And so back to the robbery, victim said that when you point the gun, she told you, you know, I don't have your weed, started to walk back in her house. When she got to the walkway, she heard five shots behind her, turned, saw you jumping the back of the gold Kia on the people who were supposed to buy the marijuana. 
They left on Chapman when they went on scene, talked to the victims. They were notified that you were at home at grandparents' house. So they went over there and overheard you, went inside the house, overheard you on the phone saying, the cops are here, I'm about to go to jail. They detained you. We were being placed in the patrol vehicle. You blurted out, they snitched, they're lying. So we were arrested for aggravated robbery and brought to your juvenile detention. All right, I guess do we have a grandparent here. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. Hello. So, how is Jordan living with you? Where's mom and dad? Uh, they're not in the picture. I got custody of them. Okay. Look, I just, this is the kind of thing at 14 years old, if he's shooting guns, actually discharging the firearm, if anything scares somebody, he's a drug dealer, he's trying to rob people. I think this is just a really bad situation. I really, I'm concerned that one day Jordan's going to do something and end up getting shot himself. Okay. So I am not comfortable releasing him. I don't know where he's getting the gun from. I don't know where he's hanging around thinking that robbery is an appropriate thing. But Jordan, you've actually pushed this too far where I, I am not comfortable releasing you. I think you are a danger to the community, okay? I do appreciate your level and outstanding. That is something your attorney hopefully can use in your case to represent you. But at this point, while your case is pending, I, I think you're just too dangerous to release, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Zanaya. Hello, Zanaya. I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. And this is a five day hearing. So let's see, you're 14 years old. Let's see. You're on probation for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon or firearm. Unsuccessfully discharged from TYRC because you continue to use drugs. And they recommended outpatient treatment. July 12th, you left house without permission. And probation went to Judge Porter and asked to withdraw the warrant because they were going to try and help you stay in the community. And so Judge Porter agreed to withdraw the warrant, but have a sweat patch and electronic monitor. Well, so Mr. Bouse, are you here? Yes, I am. So what, what, why is she in? Oh, wait, now I see the other line. Okay, so July 23rd, Judge Porter had an impromptu out of custody detention hearing since you refused a sweat patch. And so Judge Porter detained you. All right, well. And, and Judge... Yeah, I actually requested this hearing because Judge Porter said that if she could get uh, on level 1-0 and if she was willing to accept the sweat patch and electronic monitor, then that's all he wanted to let her back out in the community. And it's my understanding that she has been on level 1-0 for a few days now. And she did, um, in my conversation with her, she said that she does want to go on the sweat patch in the EM. Okay. Tonight, is that right? You want to do the sweat patch? Yes, sir. Willing to wear the EM? Yes, sir. You're not gonna, you're not gonna try and test out the EM and violate it, are you? No, sir. You're not gonna tamper with my sweat patch, are you? No, sir. Okay. You understand how simple this is? Yes. Okay. And you understand this is only because you're on probation, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you weren't on probation, you could call your own shots. But when you go on probation, what's happened is you've been, you've been found guilty, right? And you're supposed to go to TJJD, but we're giving you a chance. If you do everything that probation tells you to, that Ms. Courtney tells you to, then you get to stay at home. But if you fight her and say, I want to do it my way, you understand how simple it is to bring you back here. Okay. Right? And so what you're telling me is you want probation, right? Yes, sir. You want to do what Ms. Courtney tells you to do, right? Yes, sir. Because if you don't, what happens? I'm going to be detained. You go be detained. That's right. Okay. Well, good. So I'm going to go ahead and release you on electronic monitor with a sweat patch. Okay, please don't give her problems. Now, you understand, I'm just asking you, I'm not talking about whether it's weed's good or bad. You should do it, not do it, if it's legal or not legal. 
because in Texas, it's illegal. You understand that, right? Yes, sir. And you understand part of you telling me that you don't want to go to TJJD is that you promise me you're not going to smoke weed. Yes, sir. Okay. Because if you really want to smoke weed, just let me know. We'll send you to TJJD. You'll start your sentence. You'll finish your sentence. And then you'll turn 18. You can move to California or Colorado or wherever you want, right? Right? Yes, sir. But while you're on probation in Texas, what can you not do? Smoke weed. Smoke weed. You know, you also are not allowed to hang out with people that smoke weed either, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, Zanaya. Am I gonna see you? Am I gonna see you tomorrow? No, sir. Am I gonna see you anytime soon? No, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Herrick. Alfonso. Yes, sir. All right, Alfonso. I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. The law says when a child's brought to our facility, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you here or to release you. If I keep you here, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to be silent. You have a right to an attorney. We have appointed Mr. Sierra as your attorney for this case. And we are, let me wait on the parent. Okay. All right, so Alfonso, you were here in 2018, so you're 13 years old for an evading arrest, and you had a supervisory caution. So now, let's see, two days ago, about 12 o'clock, Arlington police were dispatched to an assault call. Caller said the suspect and victim had been drinking together when the suspect began hitting the victim, who's 35 years old. Reported the police that he and Alfonso were drinking downstairs when they began arguing. Alfonso pushed the victim down got on top of him, hit him in the face before the victim's roommate pulled Alfonso off. EMS was called. As one of the victim's eyes was completely swollen shut, the other was nearly shut as well, making him unable to see. EMS recommended he transfer to the hospital. Victim agreed. Victim recently had spinal surgery because of a work injury in his neck and back brace. He's required to be in a wheelchair or on crutches at all times. They talked to you, you admit that you hit the victim, and your hands were skinned and bruised, detained, transported here. <clears throat> so I have so many questions. So are these the parents? Yes, Judge Kim, mom doesn't speak English. I can have translate unless Mr. Sierra wants to step okay. in. Is that dad? That's mom's boyfriend. Mom's boyfriend, okay. So was mom's boyfriend there when this happened? Oiga, le está preguntando que si su novio estaba ahí cuando sucedió el incidente. Y la novia estaba ahí. No, el novio de usted. Ah, no. Oh, no. No, he wasn't there. Was mom there? Estaba allí. Yo no. No, she she wasn't. Okay, so I've I've got to ask, like, where this happened? Was it like whose whose apartment was this? ¿En qué en qué apartamento sucedió esto? ¿En el de usted? No. ¿Quién vive en el apartamento donde sucedió? Un familiar de la prima, un familiar de la novia de él. A uh, uh, girlfriend's relative, his girlfriend's relative. His girlfriend's relative. Yes. Okay, so why was he at his girlfriend's relative's house at midnight? ¿Y por qué estaba allí en la noche él, oiga? Porque andaba con la novia. He, he was with his girlfriend. Why was we with his girlfriend at midnight? ¿Y por qué estaba con su novia en la madrugada? Porque él se había ido con ella. Because he left with her. He lives with her? He left with her. He left with her. What time did they leave together? ¿Y a qué hora se fueron? ¿A qué hora se fue él con su novia? Él se había ido el jueves con ella. He left on Thursday with her. <coughs> so he had been with her all weekend? So estaba con ella todo el fin de semana? Sí. Yes. So where does she live? ¿Y dónde vive la novia? En Arlington. En Arlington. So, do her parents know that this boy is staying with their daughter for the whole weekend? Los, los papás de la novia saben que él se estaba quedando con ella por todo el fin de semana. Sí. Yes. They're okay with this. ¿Y, eh, ¿Y ellos están bien con eso? No lo sé. 
Judge can she says she doesn't know, but actually grandmother and girlfriend are in the courtroom as well. I'm sorry, they're oh they're also and okay. the, and the, and the uh, girlfriend's grandmother are okay. in the courtroom as well. Oh. Is mom okay with him shacking up with his girlfriend at 16 years old? ¿Y usted está uh, de acuerdo que él ande con la, que se quede con ella? No estaba de acuerdo que anduviera en la calle, pero sí que ande con ella. She says she's, she's okay with him dating her, but not like him being on the streets. But not what? Like him being out. Like she's okay him being, like dating her, but she's not okay with him being out. Okay, so... Then why was he out all weekend? Entonces, ¿por qué él, si usted no estaba de acuerdo que estuviera fuera, ¿por qué estaba en la calle? Se puede decir el fin de semana. ¿Por qué él se fue? Because he left. How often does he leave like that? Uh, uh, ¿Qué tan seguido se va él de la casa así? Él no se había ido apenas hasta ese día. He said it just happened that day. So it's never, never happened before. So nunca lo había hecho antes él. No, sí lo había hecho, pero ya tenía mucho que no lo hacía. He has done it before, but it's been a while since he has done it. How long is a while? ¿Qué es, qué es, uh, hace tiempo? El año pasado, hace like como last year or two years. So for two years, how long has he been dating this girl? ¿Cuánto tiene que él anda con la novia? ¿Cuánto tiene noviando? No sé. He doesn't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. ¿Cuánto, ¿Cuánto tiempo tiene con ella? Sí, ¿cuánto tiene, cuánto tiene él novia, con la novia? Ya tiene como tres, cuatro años. So they've been dating for three or four years. So he was sneaking out of the house and just leaving with his girlfriend to spend the night when he was 14 years old also? So cuando él tiene 14 años, ¿él se iba de la casa y, y, uh, para irse con la novia? No. No. But she said that he was just leaving to go with his girlfriend two years ago. Pero usted, usted acaba de decir que sí se le salía antes. Sí se salía, pero no, no se salía con, en ese tiempo no se salía con andar con la novia. Él se salía, pero no. O sea, he, que wouldn't leave, like, he wouldn't leave with the girlfriend. He would just leave, but not with her. So when he left, when he left the girlfriend this weekend on Thursday, did she call the girlfriend's parents to ask them to send him a home? Cuando él se fue el fin de semana con la novia, usted le, le, le a los papás de la novia que, lo, que de, le dijeran a Alfonso que se regresara a la casa? Uh, yo le dije a los papás de ella que se había ido él con ella. She said I, that she did call them uh, just to inform them that Alfonso had left with her daughter. Pero no, no le preguntó, no le dijo que se regresara para atrás a la casa, que le dijera. ¿A Alfonso? A los papás, como no les hablé, le digo, oiga, díganle a mi hijo que se regrese a la casa. Oh, pero es que él se iba y él regresaba. Es que eso nunca pasaba. Basically, she said that he will leave and come back. So in other words, no, she didn't ask the parents to tell him to return home. But she said that he would leave and come back. So he's done it before. So entonces, él ya lo había hecho antes, ¿verdad? Que se iba a la, a, de la casa. Se fue una vez con ella, pero hace como dos años. Two years ago, he did leave once with her. No, two years ago, he left with his friends, not with her. So, usted acaba de decir que hace dos años se fue con los amigos, no con la novia. Sí, pero una vez sí se fue con él, pero no recuerdo en cuánto tiempo era que se fue con ella. She said one time, she said she can't remember exactly when, but she did, he did leave with her once before. So, back to this weekend, she never asked them to send him home. So usted nunca los preguntó a los, a los papás de la novia que lo regresaran a la casa. No, yo no, le yo no les dije nada a ellos porque ellos tampoco sabían dónde estaban ellos. She said no, I didn't because they had no idea where they were. Her parents. Okay, isn't that a problem for her that she doesn't know where her son is and the girlfriend's parents don't know where their daughter is? Digo que si para usted no es problema que usted ni los papás de la novia sepan dónde están, dónde están ellos. No, pero a mí sí problema porque yo sí quiero saber dónde está él. She said for her it is because she wants to know where he's at. So why didn't she go in? So, okay. So Janet, I understand you're just interpreting. So my frustration is not with you. All right. So mom had said he was at girlfriend's house. Then she's saying that she didn't know where he was. 
I'm just trying to figure out why didn't she just go over there? El juez dice que está un poco confundido porque usted le está diciendo que no sabe dónde están y luego le está diciendo que estaba con la novia. Bueno, sí, yo sabía que él se había ido con su novia, pero yo no sabía para dónde se había ido. Okay, she Entonces, says that she knew he left with a girlfriend that she had no idea where, like where, like where to. Does she know where the girlfriend lives? ¿Usted sabe dónde vive la novia? Sí, sé dónde vive la novia, pero ella no estaba en su casa tampoco. She said she knows where she lives, but she wasn't home either. Who wasn't home either? The girlfriend wasn't home. Like she knows where girlfriend lives, but girlfriend wasn't home because they left together. They were right downstairs from the girlfriend's apartment. Pero dice que en to, el, el apartamento donde sucedió eso no fue donde vive la novia? No. Okay, where the, where the incident happened, girlfriend doesn't live there. It's her relative who lives there. Girlfriend's relative. Okay. Her girlfriend's apartment. Okay. I'm just curious what she has to say. Can you ask her what do you think? What is what does she think her job as a parent is? Dice que él le está preguntando qué es su trabajo. ¿Usted qué piensa que es su trabajo como como mamá de él? Pues saber dónde está él, buscarlo, ir por él a donde esté. To know where he's at, to look for him wherever he's at. Okay. Tenerlo conmigo en mi casa. And to have him home with her. Okay. Well, you can tell her I agree with her. And I understand that Alfonso is 16 years old. There's only so much you can do. All right, Alfonso. Right, please tell her that now, just so you don't Dice que él entiende lo que está diciendo y que como papá nomás hay como algo que podemos hacer. No podemos hacer todo, pero pues algo. Pues yo quisiera hacer mucho. All right, so Alfonso, this is what I'm looking at, is that you are defying your mom, not respecting your mom's rules, doing what you want. You're drinking underage. You're spending out the whole weekend. You just, you have no respect for the rules or your mother. So that's what juvenile detention is for, kids that have no respect for rules or their parents. So I'm going to go and detain you. I don't know when I'm going to release you. Well, you look all disappointed. What'd you expect? <laughs> you didn't expect that, hey, I'm going to leave and walk out of my mom's house for five days and everything's cool. So this is going to work out well. That is not what you thought. You did not think good things will happen because of this. And so that's this. You're, this is why I tell the kids, Alfonso, you're free to make a choice. You're just not free to choose the consequence. This is the consequence. And now you're actually looking at a felony charge of injury to the elderly or disabled. So you actually can go to the Texas Juvenile Justice Department for this case. Just to let you know, that's important for you to do everything you can to make your situation better. If you have a question for me, I don't mind answering it. If you want to tell me something, I am absolutely certain your attorney, Mr. Sierra, does not want you to tell me anything. Is that fair to say, Rafi? That's correct, Judge. All right. So, Alfonso, do you have a question for me or do you want to tell me something? Well, I just wanted to tell you that. Okay, hold on. Your attorney just told you he does not want you to tell no. me anything. I am telling you that you shouldn't just tell me something, okay? If you ignore both of us, you're, you can tell me something, but we're both telling you that you shouldn't, okay? No. Yes, sir. Um, and with this charge, um, you think by those 10 days I do it here and I'd be here good, like, can I can we work something out? Well, that is for your attorney to do. Okay, he will work with the district attorney's office on your case and see if he can negotiate something or work out some kind of agreement. If he can, great. If he can't, then you know you will get a trial, and I guarantee Alfonso, I will give you the fairest trial that you can possibly get in Tarrant County or in the state of Texas. Like I am, I don't play favorites. The DA will tell you that I am not extra nice to them, but your attorney will also tell you I'm not extra nice to them either. Right? I just for me, I don't. I just want to make sure the law is followed. I don't root for one side or the other. So you'll get the fairest trial I can give you. Um, but I'm going to let you know that is something that you need to discuss with your attorney, whether a trial is appropriate or not. Okay? Well, Your Honor, when can I speak to attorney? Well, he, he said he's going to call you. I'm going to call you, Mr. Alonzo. Alfonso. 
Sorry. Alfonso. All right. Any other questions, Alfonso? Alfonso. All right. So you have your behavior level. I'm going to let you know if it goes down, you're causing problems, and getting in fights, then it's much harder for your attorney to get good things for you. The better you behave, the easier your attorney's job is. Okay. All right. Thank you, Alfonso. All right. Thank so, you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Sierra. So at this point, these proceedings have been publicized and broadcast on YouTube for the public to view what happens inside public courtrooms using your tax dollars. However, Texas Family Code 54.08A says that when a child is over 14, as this next child is, uh, the courts are supposed to be open. However, uh, the court can, with good cause shown, uh, close the proceedings to the public because of some of the information for this next case, I'm going to uh, make the finding that's the best interest of the child and the public to close these proceedings to the public. And so I will discontinue the YouTube broadcast and we'll be, I guess all the YouTube people will be back at 1.30 tomorrow. There's uh, 30 seconds for a tape delay.